there. I am Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. Super duper to be live with you right now and uh, bringing uh, some audio goodness to you every day on my channel at youtube.com slash musicradiocreative. Make sure that you are subscribed if you've not done so already so you never miss uh, one of these live streams or, of course, uh, one of the replays of the live streams. Answering your questions, as always, send them in via the community at community.musicradiocreative.com. You can also email me via the website at musicradiocreative.com. Uh, so let's have a look. And this one comes in from Andreas. Uh, it says, hey, Mike, I'm talking about Rogue Amoeba Loopback software. I'd like a tutorial or uh, some kind of look into how it works and possibly how you use it for your live streams. It's a fantastic tool, but confusing in regards to audio routing, though. Uh, and also asking about... Um, microphone levels. I will do a, a separate live stream address on microphone levels uh, in the future. So thanks for asking the question. Uh, Music Radio Creative, by the way, let me just say, can take care of all your podcast audio production. If that's something you need help with, if you just want to uh, hit record and then hit stop and send a file and have us do the rest, it's definitely something we can take care of. Uh, we've got radio uh, trained producers who can make your podcast really sound great and pop out of the speakers uh, and generally sound good, uh, even to those listening in earbuds without giving them a headache with uh, too much compression. Uh, so if you're interested in that, go over to musicradiocreative.com slash podcast dash production. We assign one producer per show, so you'll always get that same producer uh, to build up a working relationship with as well. We'd love to work with you. Musicradiocreative.com slash podcast dash production. Okay, uh, let's go over to Loopback from Rogue Amoeba here. And as you can see, I've got a couple of devices set up. Uh, I'm going to show you what they do and how they work. But first... Let me show you how this wonderful bit of kit works with a brand new virtual device. So when you load this uh, program up for the first time, Loopback, which is available, uh, as Andreas rightly uh, pointed out, from a company called Rogue Amoeba. Uh, look them up. Really, they make great audio routing software, especially good for podcasters. Um, you can either plus or minus uh, devices here. So let's look at the devices side of the thing and click plus. Okay, uh, at the moment it says loop back audio. <laughs> Adobe Auditions let me know that uh, uh, the uh, connected uh, audio devices has changed because I've just created a brand new one. How fun. Uh, let's stop that flashing. And then what I can do here, I can rename it so I can call it Mike audio, for instance. And then I can select a source uh, to, <laughs> okay, <laughs> Don't show me that again, Audition. Uh, otherwise, it's going to keep flashing up every time I make a change. Mic audio. And now I can choose anything that's uh, plugged in, plumbed into my Mac, uh, whether that be external or internal. So that could be uh, an audio interface, a mixing desk. Uh, it could be a bit of software I've got running. I can have as an audio device that I can then route into other bits of software like Adobe Audition or like Audacity or whatever. Um, so look, you see you've got loads of choices here, recent applications I've been using, uh, also my built-in microphone, my C920 webcams mic, Scarlett 2i2 audio interface, and my mixing desk, the Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK. Um, so this is perfect if you're doing a Skype call. Lots of podcasters are doing Skype calls or they're doing a Hangout via Google Hangout. So you could select Google Chrome here and it can be on its own channel, its own device. Um, so this is really, really, really good, especially if your audio interface doesn't give you the ability to, um, to loop back audio that you hear from your computer. So let me show you how it works with Skype. If I was to click Skype there, that would be my Skype audio, and then I can, um, that's now a new uh, audio interface essentially in my computer. Now if I go into Audition CC Preferences, Audio Hardware, and we'll see here, default input is Scarlett 2i2, but I can change it now to Mic Audio, which we know is my Skype, and boom, I am recording there instantly, if I want, uh, from Skype, uh, straight into Adobe Audition, which is pretty cool. You can do it through uh, channel mapping as well. Uh, so there are there are different ways, as long as you've selected mic audio. Uh, yeah, I'm going to modify that there. You can still have your output as your Scarlett 2i2 or your mixing desk if you want. Uh, but the input there is mic audio in one and two. See, it creates a virtual device with two stereo channels there. Really, really fantastic stuff. So I'm just going to cancel out of that, go back to loopback. So anything that your computer uh, does to make a noise internally can be recorded through loopback. Really, really good. Really love it. What about external audio devices? Yes, it can do that too. Uh, so with the Scarlett 2i2, 
This is where it gets confusing because you can route multiple uh, sources in there. So I could have Skype and the Scarlett 2i2 uh, both in the audio sources section. Let's remove Skype. And what is really cool about this is I have the ability to do manual channel mapping. And now with Scarlett 2i2, it's not really that impressive because it only has two channels left and right. So you input something there and there it is. But if you're using something really super duper, let's just get rid of that, like um, a Soundcraft Signature 12 MTK, you can, you can have any channel you want uh, routed through. So let's minus one and two here. Uh, oh, you've got to have one channel by default. So say I had something on channel 11 of my mixing desk, I can then, uh, I should be able to, uh, yeah, drop that in there. So that's channel one. It's going to be a mono channel of channel 11. And you can, of course, do the stereo channels there. So I could have channel 11 and 12, drop it down. And now I'm, uh, I've am i created an audio device uh, there, uh, which will have outputs from channels 11 and 12 on my mixing desk. So really, really cool stuff. Let me get rid of that now and show you some use cases uh, for live streaming. So uh, hang on, minus that mic audio. I don't want that there. So I have got it set up in two different ways. How is it set up? First of all, live stream audio to you. So I have this set up as uh, uh, an output. Uh, channels 13 and 14 on my mixing desk are an overall output of everything coming out of my mixing desk post the fader. So when I ride on EQs and reverb like this, uh, it will go to you via the live stream. And I've done that by clever uh, audio routing. For instance, I know OBS Studio that I use to do these live streams, uh, it will not allow me uh, to, uh, uh, well, uh, it might actually update at some point and change, uh, but it has not previously allowed me uh, to route uh, channels 13 and 14 of my mixing desk. By default, it will just check channel 1 and 2. And many software programs do that. It's very annoying. That's why I created this live stream audio to get the exact channels I want. And for mix minus, again, what I'm doing is I'm assigning channel 3 of my mixing desk, which is this microphone. I'm talking into. And that means uh, when I want to um, talk to somebody over Skype uh, and play lots of jingles and stuff, I can send them just my microphone and nothing else and certainly not the feedback of their audio. Uh, so mix minus audio I use on things like Skype and Google Hangouts and live stream audio. That's my default um, audio virtual device uh, that runs inside OBS Studio. Sometimes you'll find uh, there's a little bit of latency uh, using loopback and any other software. Anything that is software based is going to introduce latency for sure, which is a slight delay in your audio, uh, usually around 20 milliseconds, something like that. Uh, but that's no worries because in OBS Studio, there's a, an offset delay. I might do a future tutorial about that. I might, if, you like, uh, if you would like some tutorials on OBS Studio, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do some more. OBS live streaming tutorials. Um, but essentially, there is a setting in OBS that allows you to set an offset. Uh, so if you're using something like Loopback from Rogue Amoeba, which I thoroughly recommend you do if you're a podcaster or a live streamer, uh, then you can uh, you can go ahead and uh, set up some delay preferences to match up with your new, fresh-sounding, awesome audio. So it's an introduction to Loopback there from Robo Rogue Amoeba uh, for Andreas. I hope you've really enjoyed that. Uh, enjoy recording your podcast. And like I say, if you'd like us to take the pressure off producing your podcast, head over to musicradiocreative.com slash podcast dash production. 